What's going on everybody? What's happening? Welcome back to, you know it, the bullshit, the nonsense, right? That we call life. Hey, you know what's cool about getting old? You can just, you don't even give a f anymore, you know? Like, I can just go on YouTube, put myself out on YouTube with my bed head, because I just rolled out of this here bed, because I'm like a real trucker and I slept in the truck last night. Yes, I did too. And we're just sitting here waiting for the law, but, you know, I'm, I like the ELDs for the most part because I've said it before, prior to the ELDs, the companies would push the shit out of us and all that nonsense. So we need them to, like, keep the companies in check a little bit, but on some aspects they kind of suck, man, because who the fuck is, like, almost 50 years old and sleeps for, like, eight hours, you know? Come on, man, we're old people, we sleep for, like, four hours and we wake up. So it'd be kind of nice if I could just sleep for like five hours, wake up, drive for sleep three hours, four hours, whatever, pull over, take an old man nap, drive again, you know, instead of being forced to take a full ten hours sitting here because I woke up like three hours ago and I've just been sitting here going like, all right, I can't split, I can't act, I can't do shit, I gotta actually do a ten. And by the time I get done fucking around, I'll probably get three hours down the road and be like, oh man, I'm tired. You know? Because we are, like, just completely told what to do, you know? So, before I get into all my negative nonsense and bullshit here, I do have to say a little bit on the positive side. Eh, there's some more jobs out there. It's looking a, bit, a little bit better, right? And I got a call the day before yesterday from a company that I worked for... A while back right and basically what they needed is they needed one bad motherfucker to come out and do some shit right so they give me a call and they offer me this run and this job and a new truck and all this nonsense um i'm not gonna take it it wouldn't have been horrible right i mean there been some work it was a dedicated michigan you know grand rapids michigan to uh yuma arizona and you can turn and burn it, you know, like, but with your ag exempt and just running it out because it's a drop and hook and you come back empty, then you could turn and burn. It was 4,200 miles per week, six days, possibly less. It'd be about six days though. And uh, that would be with stop paying and everything like that, about $2,700 a week real thing it's a real thing go back like i always say go back and look at my melt money video it's a real thing i know everyone wants to call bullshit on it but those are my check stubs on there now it would be some work right it'd be some work you'd have to run on some miles but it's doable now there's a lot of people at that company and whatnot out there that are like oh hell no dude i'm not running four thousand two hundred miles or whatever in six days so yeah that's some miles man i get it but i'm not gonna do that because i like this company that i'm at here man you know i'm not saying things are great but you know just wanted to throw in a little bit of positive in there before i drop this huge negativity bomb that i got all loaded up here so one of our uh fellow community members just ran into a, a big problem that people have been dealing with uh mr rick right the truck booting situation it's been going on for a minute you know if you're not familiar with it you must be living underneath a rock somewhere but there's certain truck stops lots of walmarts you're getting your truck booted and it's costing a lot of money to get the boots off and when i say a lot of money i'm not talking 250 dollars 500 dollars talking like three thousand dollars and if you don't believe me courtesy of mr rick here is the invoice for what they had to pay to get the boot off of his truck so here's how this went down right mr rick makes his delivery in charlotte running low on hours like we always do in that predicament you know do you tell dispatch prior to getting there hey man i'm not going to be able to make this delivery because i'm not going to be able to find parking down there and they're going to be like well blah 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 you got hours make the fucking delivery or do you PC out and then have to deal with your safety director? This bullshit about PCing. Right? You know? Come on. We all get screwed on those damn dispatch loads like that. 
like I was saying before, how about the Walmart distribution deliveries when you get there, start your clock, run out of hours, you know, come on, they set them up that way. You think if you're a dispatcher or whatever, you should be able to count. One, two, three, go on Google, look at it, add an hour. Wow, it's amazing, you know. So Mr. Rick, you know, delivered his load and everything and ran into that predicament where, where the fuck do I park, right? So he started asking the local drivers, you know, where do I park around here? And they were like, hey, go up to the strip mall by the Walmart up there, you'll be good to go. And he's like, you sure about that? And they're like, oh yeah, man, I live around here. Okay, that's, that's pretty good, you know, information. I don't fucking trust anybody anymore. Like, I don't even let people spot me. Like, if someone's trying to spot me back and in, I just ignore them, man. I, I'd rather just get out and look. They'll stand there and on their phone boom, as you run into shit. And they go, oh, whoops, sorry. And then they'll just walk away, you know? Um, so he took their word for it. He went to Walmart, right? He was still a little bit like, eh, I don't know about this bullshit. So there was Walmart employees there. So he's like, am I good here to park? They're like, yeah, you're no problem, you're good. You know, come midnight or whatever, rap, rap, rap on the door. Opens the door, he's got some hood rat motherfucker. You know, because that's what they are. Come on. In a fucking Honda Accord. <clears throat> with a magnetic towing sign on the side that's like, yo, dude, your shit's booted and you owe me $3,000. Like, if that ain't some sort of extortion and shit, you know? I mean, didn't the mafia get broke up for this whole deal of running around telling people they needed protection money and all that? I mean, if I remember correctly, I do believe that a lot of those guys went to prison and they kind of broke the mafia up for that whole deal. But we're kind of letting it slide with this, it seems like, right? So it's a fucking scam all day long. If you didn't want him in the Walmart, you should have just knocked on the door and told him to get the fuck out of Walmart, you know? It's all about making money because they're hood rats, you know? On that note, I don't hold a high level of respect for towing companies and tow truck drivers. Like, I've had instances in the past with my friends and myself that when our cars get impounded because we may or may have not been out doing crimes, you know, shit like that, uh, by the time you get your car out of impound, it seems like a bunch of your shit's missing. You know, I used to have a DeWalt drill and a, a 12 inch pile subwoofer box in there and all of a sudden that shit disappeared and they're like, oh, I don't know, somebody must have broken the lot last night. Yeah, I'm sure they did. And through, I wouldn't call them friends, but through my network of people that I know, they're basically friends of friends, I know two tow truck drivers, right? And they're, they're shitheads, man. Now, I'm not saying that all are. A lot of towing companies are good. A lot of tow truck drivers are good. A lot of tow truck drivers risk their life to come out there and help our asses out on the side of the road, right? It's a dangerous job. It really is. But some of them are just shitty. And these two fellas that I know, man, they get a fucking joy out of repossessing people's car, man. I mean, they, they sit around the bonfire talking about it like it's a fucking cool thing that they did, you know. And I understand it, man. Going and repossessing some motherfucker's Bentley, you know, or fucking Range Rover or whatever. I don't know if I'd have really have a problem with that myself. You don't necessarily need that shit. If you can't afford it, we're taking it. But to go take some woman's Toyota Camry because you know she had some sort of issues and had to take some time off of work or she's just struggling trying to get through this world that's pretty expensive and hard to get through right now um yeah i get it i mean you do got to pay your payments so the car does have to be repoed but you get joy out of that you fucking piece of shit weirdo you know what i mean you're a piece of shit is what you are that's my thoughts on that a little bit but to jump back to the Rick story, you know, so he gets a hold of his company and tells him, you know, I got this situation going on here. And they're like, what do you want us to do? And they're like giving him shit. Like, I don't know what you want us to do. Call the cops. So he's like, you call the cops. Like, you're the company. You fucking deal with it. And they're like, we can't get a hold of cops. We're up here. Well, really? Really? You can't find the number for the police department down there? Boy, if we only had this technology called computers and stuff that, you know, right? So, Rick calls the cops himself. Now the cops come out. They ain't gonna do nothing about it. Now, I will say on the Memphis ones, because that's where it kind of originated, was down in Memphis being a problem. The police down there now, I heard this and I read, I did some research on some articles to make sure that I wasn't being bullshitted. Uh, it's true. The police down in Memphis now are backing you up on that. Um, first of all, the trucking, the truck stops that hired 
contracted the towing companies have pretty much broke their contracts with those towing companies now because even the truck stop owners are going like what the fuck man you know it's one thing to like tow people out for legitimate shit but it's another thing to go out and boot every goddamn truck in my parking lot you know they're losing business and they're getting a bad name <clears throat> well the cops down there as well in memphis when they come they will hang out while you cut the boot off or call someone out to cut the boot off so that's good because it went through the city council and all that shit down there so it looks from the articles that i read on it that that in the memphis area is pretty much going to come to an end here because the police and the law are hip to the bullshit so they're actually going after the towing company i don't remember the name of that towing company right now but it was kind of funny with the towing company the towing company is claiming that the city of memphis is going after them because they are minorities and that the city's picking on them you know being racist or whatever now dude it ain't because you're a minority it's because you're a ripping off motherfucker but as far as rick's situation the police were no help so he's in that conundrum so he calls back his people and he's like yo dude you know what i mean i need some money i gotta get this shit paid so they finally give him some efs checks to get the shit paid right well, now they're charging him the $3,000. He went through the ranks with the driver managers and all that. Went all the way up to the owner. Figuring, and even when I talked to him, I figured the owner would do something about it. Nope. They want to take $100 a week out of his check until he's paid the $3,000. I wouldn't do that. It's a conundrum because I know that he needs that job. You know, we all need our job. And right now, jobs are a little tough. I don't think he's ever liked it since he's worked there. He's just doing the man thing and fucking manning up and doing a job you don't like until shit changes, you know? Because, you know, to back up, that's that one that I went to orientation with and I never went to work for. One of them. Not the Wisconsin one. It was the Michigan one. Because I went there for their orientation and my first impression was... I would rather go bankrupt, to be honest, and work for them fuckheads because they are just yuck. You know, I mean, they give me an example. They won't even put a fucking refrigerator in your truck, man. You gotta buy your own refrigerator. How cheap is that? Like, just bullshit. And it's the people, and ugh, that company's gross. So, I'm pretty sure he's been dealing with that already because he's not a dumb dude. He's been around a minute. As a matter of fact, I do believe he used to own his own fleet of trucks. I can't remember, but. He's not an idiot, so he's known that it's not a great company. He's just got to put the time in, right? Like we do, until we get to one that's good. So I'm sure he's not going to stay there, but that puts him in a predicament because they're going to hold his fucking checks. More than likely, and he's probably going to have to sue him because a lot of you people don't understand that. That if I steal this refrigerator out of this truck right now and I quit here, they can't hold my check for this refrigerator right if i steal this whole truck they can't hold my check for that they cannot do that i can steal the whole truck i'll steal the tires off it right i'll just steal the tires and sell them to my friend he's on our operator he use some new tires right they can't not hold my check for that they still have to pay me for the work that i did they have to sue me for the tires that i stole it's a thing so they need to give him his checks and then they need to try to sue him for that now on the flip side if he's lucky i guess and if, he, if he's got enough you know it takes a minute to fight people right like when i went on workers comp once back in the day boy they about ran me fucking dry it was just fortunate that i literally had tens of thousands of dollars sitting in the bank at the time to be able to fight them and i won and they bought me a new house it's a real story it's a real story. I won. It took a fucking year and tens of thousands of dollars of my own money to get back my hundred and forty thousand dollars that I got for them. Them. Fuck with me and find out, right? But uh hopefully he's got the capability to fight him if they do take his checks like that. Because in the end, then he'll win. Because then he can turn around and sue him for lost wages and any sort of expenses that he occurred because he didn't have that check, right? Generally what I've found in that area because I have had companies try to hold my checks Now the one that I flew out and got that truck in Salt Lake City I just got straight fucked on that one. I never got paid that guy went bankrupt, but outside of that I've had at least two or three that have tried that uh, 
two were mechanics jobs but I always won because I just go in and threaten them and tell them okay well go ahead and hold my checks and I'm gonna sue the fuck out of you and then let's say my car gets repossessed because I didn't get my checks dude they gotta pay for all of that shit when they go you come on you've been to court before you gonna be a real fucker you know what I'm saying so they don't want that shit they'll pay you trust me most places will pay you unless they're fucking stupid right don't park at Walmart all right, this has been going on for a long time. A lot of shitty truck drivers ruined that a long time ago. Go to a truck stop on a nice hot summer day, especially after it rains, and smell that lovely smell of fucking piss all over. Hell, they can't even go in between the truck and trailer. They just got to piss right there by the door. I mean, come on, I've seen them pissing at the fuel island. Have you ever wondered when you're getting fuel, like, man, it smells like piss here. They piss at the fuel island, dude. The bathroom's right there. They're, they're fucking... I mean, look at this sign right here. This was in the loves. This sign right here says to not flush the washcloths and shit in your clothes down the toilet. Well, if loves put up a fucking laminated plexiglass sign above the toilet saying, please don't flush our washcloths in your clothes down our toilet. People must be flushing washcloths and clothes down the toilet. Why you would flush a, that shit down the toilet is beyond me, but we all know the truckers are a little bit dumb. So with that kind of bullshit and the shit bags and the garbage and all the shit going on at Walmart, we got kicked out of there a long fucking time ago, you know? And I agree with it a little bit. I mean, I don't want to go to my fucking local Walmart and deal with nasty ass fucking truck drivers parked all over, jamming up the parking lot, running over all the bushes and shit. It's unfortunate, you know? A few people can ruin it for everybody else. Now, on the Walmarts, right? One thing, I've said it before, it's not necessarily Walmart. Everyone puts it off on Walmart. Like, hey, fuck you, Walmart. We bring all your shit, you know? Well, first of all, they got their own fleet of trucks, but we do bring a lot of their shit. Uh, look into it, man. Research it. Because, you know, a lot of this shit before I run my dumb mouth, Believe it or not, I look into it. Now, sometimes I'm wrong and I just go off the cuff and talk some bullshit because that's the whole fun of YouTube. But a lot of this shit, before I run my mouth, I look into it. Walmart doesn't necessarily have a problem with us parking there. It's the townships won't allow the zoning to have us there. And then Walmart gets in trouble, so they got to keep you out, you know, or at least do due diligence to keep you out to cover their own ass, right? Well, on the Walmarts, if you go on Trucker Path, right? You guys, and remember, I'm not sponsored by Trucker Path anymore. I need to work that out again. But it's not me. I, and even when I originally started that, I wasn't promoting Trucker Path because they were paying me. I was doing it because I wanted you guys to know about Trucker Path. I mean, there's Mud Flap too. I haven't tried it. There's other ones probably out there. Uh, anyway, as far as the Walmarts go on there, when you're looking at the Walmarts, It'll say, like, right there, no truck parking allowed in red letters. And then it'll say, truck parking allowed in green letters. Or it'll say, uh, parking for shopping only. Now, I'm not sitting here trying to piss nobody off and say, you know, about that I'm a know-it-all and you shouldn't park at Walmart or whatever. But I'm just saying that you can check into this stuff here on Trucker Path, right? So here's how it works. If you've never used it before, this is that Charlotte area down here, right? So you go up here, you put your Walmarts in down here in the places here at the bottom, right? And you click on this Walmart here. See how it says right there in green, overnight parking is allowed? Then that's pretty good. You know, I would probably still check the reviews myself. You go up here and you click reviews. See where you want to definitely go in and check the reviews because that said overnight parking allowed. Now they're saying in here that they're booting. You see these pictures right here? They're saying that they're booting and charging $1,500, so you can't even go by the, uh, that green lettering up there saying that it's overnight allowed. Now you jump over here to the other one, down here I believe it was, that says it's not allowed. You hit the reviews. Do not park here overnight. You will get booted. You'll get booted no matter what manager says. Such and such transportation had to pay $3,300 to remove the boot. And it goes right on down there, man. All these people got booted there. See what I'm saying? Just throwing that out there, man. Not judging. Not saying anything. Just letting people know about it. I don't agree with his situation. I think they should fucking 
do something with it. At the least, right? Split it, which would still be too much. 1500 is too fucking much. But there could have been things that could have been done here. As soon as they unlocked that boot, they could have canceled those EFS codes. That happens all the time. They didn't even try. And then, just, let's just take, let's say, let's just say that Rick screwed up, right? We'll say Rick screwed up. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying he did. I'm just saying, let's just say hypothetically that he screwed up. Stand with your employee, man. It's a fucking scam. It's an obvious scam. A hood rat fucking shitty, shitty fucking scam, right? It's bullshit. It should be illegal. Do I need to keep going? So they got scammed together, man. So the company should stick with him. Now, they, they, they expect this company driver to go fight these fucking tone companies and get with the law and all that bullshit. That goddamn company that he works for is so fucking huge and so rich. You know what I mean? It's a fucking huge company. It's a piece of shit, by the way. Oh, I mentioned that earlier. They should go after that. They should do it just morally and ethically. They should look at it. If I owned that trucking company, I would be like, I cannot believe these motherfuckers ripped me off. And if I owned that trucking company, $3,000 to me would probably be like $3 to me right now. It'd be nothing. Come on. These motherfuckers are rich, man. So, but the moral of it, I would be like, man, you ain't fucking me over like that, motherfucker. And I would take my goddamn power that I had with that huge company and the money that I had with that huge company and the lawyers that I had with that huge company and I would go after that little bullshit towing company and I would spend money that you know I would lose money to fight them bitches because I'm fucking rich and powerful and I own a trucking company and I'm going to show you what's right I'm not going to take this fucking company driver that's making seventy, eighty thousand dollars a year ignore this bullshit lying and cheating tow company and throw this hard working truck driver under the bus and then charge him for that that's fucking gross regardless if it was his fault or not that's fucking gross and that's bullshit as you can see that shit gets me a little bit fired up sorry about that just getting kind of sick of it, you know. I think most of us working class people are getting pretty sick and tired of the rich people's bullshit, right? Come on, just keep stepping on us. And I am kind of turning into Alex Jones a little bit, right? Hey, we'll get into that more in my next video. I go off in some crazy rant about that. But anyway, thanks for watching. Click those buttons. I'll get some more shit out there. Oh, and if you um, know of any companies over on the east side, southeast side of Michigan that are good, throw them in the comments for uh, Mr. Rick and uh, check into him. He's looking for something, you know, probably $1,800 a week type deal, six days on the road. Not, you know, no bullshit where he's out for like months and shit like that. So if you got something going on, help your brother trucker out and, uh, you know, throw it down there.